Yo, 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 what's up everyone? Kyle here with Awesome Sauce Network. Welcome back to the channel. You are watching my very last custom water-cooled build log of my custom water-cooled build series, uh, where I document my entire experience from start to finish of my very first ever custom water-cooled build. Uh, and those of you who have been sticking with me from the very beginning, or even if you just joined in the middle, thank you so much for staying tuned and uh, for following me through all of these uh, amazing experiences that I've had when building this system. Uh, but of course you don't want to hear me ramble on for too much longer. You want to see the finished product, don't you? I know you do. I know you do. So here it is in all of its glory. Take a good look. Let's look at the camera centered there. I can finally say this thing is done. Which, uh, wow, I can actually say those words. It's kind of hard to imagine, but there it is. And let me just kind of briefly explain to you guys what I've done since the last build log. Uh, I've done a few things. Um, and I didn't really document them all that much because of the wedding and the honeymoon that I recently came back from. I uh, didn't really have time to do many time lapses of that sort of thing, but it's all kind of the same stuff that you've already seen in this series, so I didn't want to bore you guys to death. Uh, but here it is. The first thing that I've changed was the hardline tubing. I pretty much took out all of the hardline tubing that I had initially put in, apart from uh, that tube right there and that little one up there. Those were fine, but uh, as far as the big three, the one that's going from the uh, the 360 red to the CPU, and the, the CPU to the terminal, and the terminal to the pump, of course I kind of did that backwards because it's actually flowing uh, clockwise, uh, but uh, there you guys have it. I actually fine-tuned the tubing just the way I liked it, and it's, it looks a lot cleaner as a result. I think the bends are a lot smoother. Um, there is one little tiny itty bitty bubble right here uh, on the corner, but it's almost unnoticeable. And especially with the fluid in there, you can't really tell too much unless you're really trying to look for it. Uh, but uh, you can also see that instead of having the 45 degree angle that went from the pump to the terminal here, I just kind of did a uh, two right angles, or actually three. One, two, wait, one, two, three. I can count. I can count. Math. I don't even. So I did three right angles here. I think that just looks really nice with the uh, the right angles uh, of the other tubes. I think it just matches really nicely. Also, remember this tube kind of went out way too far and it kind of went down right around here. And when the side panel window was on, you couldn't even really see it. And now it, it peeks through perfectly. Uh, I think the sizing is just spot on. I'm actually really impressed with myself. Um, and also I painted the uh, the X99 cover plate in pink right back there as many of you guys suggested Thank you so much for your suggestions I'm really happy with how that turned out as well as small as it is It's just, it's just a tiny detail that you wouldn't think makes a big difference But it really does and it just adds to the theme that much more apart from that I will say that some of the sleeving here the paint has come off of the pink sleeving that I had initially custom painted You can kind of see the white peeking through and I think that's just because when I was trying to train the cables and getting my finger oils all over it I think some of the paint rubbed off, but that's nothing that a little touch-up can't fix. I'm just going to get uh, the same color paint and a little paintbrush and just kind of go over it really lightly just to fill in those gaps, and it should be good to go. Uh, apart from that, the cables themselves are still getting trained. I need to get some cable combs throw in there just to make them a bit more tidy. I think they could be a bit better, especially this one at the bottom. I really haven't messed too much with it, but uh, you can kind of see they're overlapping there. I think the other thing that I added in here, or I know the other thing that I added in here, since last time was the LED strips. So I've got one, two strips right here. And these are the cheapy uh, pink LEDs that I got off of Amazon. I would have loved to have Bit Bit Phoenix strips in here, especially their new magnetic ones, but they don't offer them in pink, uh, just purple. Ironically, these pink LED strips are kind of more on the purple side than pink, or I should say it's a kind of a, a fair blend of the two colors. So they're not exactly the same color as the fluid itself, but it does look pretty nice. Now I did try to use white LEDs for this uh, system, and uh, I just didn't like the look of it. I actually really like how this pink slash purple color kind of transforms the look of the system at nighttime or when, when the system's powered on. And I think it kind of gives it a, a dual personality, uh, what, whether it's on or off. And I kind of like that transformative aspect of it. Uh, and I'll show you guys what that looks like uh, in just a minute. Uh, you can see here I have to, I had to put some scotch tape, some really nasty looking scotch tape here. Uh, because these LED strips are so cheap, when I actually pulled the adhesive backing strip off of it, this guy, 
this little strip here, uh, it actually took the adhesive with it. So there's actually no sticky stuff on the back of this LED strip right here, which is why I have the ugly scotch tape. Of course, I will be replacing this tape with something a little bit more permanent and less tacky looking uh, in the near future. Maybe some electrical tape, or maybe I'll even glue uh, this strip down here. Uh, this one as well, this this one does did retain its adhesive backing, but uh, as you can tell, it's not the sturdiest. So I did have to have a piece of tape here. Again, I'll replace that. And I do have some twist ties uh, going routing around the back here through the uh, the ventilation holes where the where the 140 or 120 millimeter fan would be uh, just to keep it tied down a bit more uh, but when it's powered on it looks great you can see this uh, really ugly cable going down here underneath the power supply and uh, out the back grommet right there um, going to molex connectors I don't like the look of this at all I could paint this black for a more stealth look uh, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now because when the side panels on you can't see it at all uh, you can just kind of see the the mid portion of the power supply right here and then it kind of cuts off you have to look really at a, at a steep angle to actually see anything down here so I'm okay with it for now but um, Nonetheless, I'll probably be doing something with this red cable in the future. You can see I took the EVGA sticker off of the power supply just to give it a more stealthy look as well. And uh, a couple more things that I wanted to mention about this is the memory. You might notice that the memory has changed. It was the Ripjaws 4 from G-Skill and now it's the HyperX Predator kit from Kingston or HyperX as their new branding is is so named. Uh, the reason why I went for these is because they're matte instead of the Ripjaws 4, which is a kind of a glossy finish. I didn't really like the glossy look inside of this case. I think the matte just makes it look a bit more stealthy as well. And the taller heat spreaders, spreaders I think, adds a lot more depth to the case uh, at the same time. So I, I don't know. I think the uh, the Ripjaws 4 were a bit lower and they kind of blended in with the uh, the CPU water block there. Uh, with the, uh, the Predator heat spreaders, I just think it looks pretty badass and uh, I really like the look of it overall. Now before I talk your ears off even more, I think I'm just going to shut up for a minute and put this damn side panel on so you can get a look at how sexy the LEDs look in this system. Alright, so here it is guys, all lit up, powered on. And you'll also probably notice, I didn't mention this, I wanted it to be, be a surprise, I've got some under lighting right there. In the same color as the inside of the case, I actually put two LED strips on the bottom of the Define S, just like that. And it just kind of gives it a nice little underglow, which I think looks really sexy. I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys think in the in the comments. But uh, I really like the uh, the added effect that it gives. Of course, I have the cables routed back here again with the ugly Scotch tape that's going. Uh, both both wires are going into this uh, PCI slot, the very bottom PCI slot, and that's then routing uh, in one of the little holes underneath the, the motherboard, behind the motherboard tray, and into. A separate Molex connector. One thing I will note is that uh, I would like to swap out this LED in the future if that's possible and get the same color LED in here so when it's powered on it's just a little bit more cohesive with the color scheme and also the hideous SLI bridge that I have in here will be shortly or uh, soon replaced with an EVGA bridge uh, that I will be doing a custom LED in that as well. Jay's Two Cents does an excellent tutorial on how to do that and I, uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that looks in this system as well. But uh, enough for aesthetics, why don't we take a look at the business end, flip this case around, uh, and take a look at the cable management that I've had to work with. All right, so here's a look at the back end with all the cable management. Uh, of course, in the Define S, uh, you have all three hard drive mounts at the back of the case, uh, behind the motherboard tray, and I do have all three of those populated with uh, WD black drives. So, of course, that limits the amount of cable management I can do from this side of the case onward, uh, apart from maybe in between the drives where I can fit a few cables in there, but that really had had me, um, uh, it was really challenging actually to, to kind of get all the cables in here, especially for a custom water-cooled system with multiple GPUs. You're dealing with a lot more cabling, especially with extensions, that even adds more pressure to the situation, but I think I managed quite nicely. Uh, the Velcro straps of the Define S definitely came in handy, as well as the multiple tie-down points. Uh, obviously there was no tie-down point here because it's a big cutout for the motherboard tray, so this uh, my ATX along with the, the SATA data cables are kind of just hanging here, but they do press against quite easily when the side panel's on. On, and the side panel does go on fairly easily. You kind of got to push it a little bit, but it goes on no problem. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this system in general, because again, it's done! Yep, I'm so glad it's done, guys. This has been an amazing experience. I keep saying that. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys following me every step of the way, leaving those comments and suggestions. You guys have helped me build this system more than you think. 
Uh, there were a lot of times where I was just at a loss of what to do or how to go forward, and I asked you guys for, for, for comments and suggestions, and you guys were really helpful in your ideas that you gave me. I used a lot of them, so thank you guys so much, as well as all of my sponsors. Uh, you guys know who they are. That's going to do it. I, I don't know what to do now, now that, now that the system's done. I think I'll probably just continue making other tech videos that aren't about this computer. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it guys. Give me a comment, leave me some love down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.